the research paper that we're writing for um, the final research project in our 2089 course in a little bit more detail. Um, and some of you may have heard some of this during conferences, but in case I missed some of this spiel with some of you, um, here it is just for reinforcement. Um, so when we start writing the research paper, um, remember that this is going to be a pretty short paper. And in the next slide, I'm going to kind of start breaking down how it kind of looks when you start dividing it up, right? So the best way to think of a long paper is to think about what different, how different sections, smaller portions of it, are going to fit together into a cohesive whole. Because you need to do lots of small little things when you're writing a paper. And, um, you know, you can even think about this on a, on a smaller level, like something like the literacy analysis, you know, you had to have these different components kind of fit together, a conclusion, some kind of opener that kind of grabs our attention, right? And that all kind of fits together into a whole paper. Well, research paper is the same way. So um, remember that this is going to be pretty short and you'll need to stay very focused with your topic, something we all talked about um, when we were conferencing. Um, you want to also focus on gathering as much data as you can over this weekend um, and into the beginning of next week. Um, Again, you know, this is a pretty short period of time to do research, which I understand. So hopefully we were able to find a topic that um, you feel is researchable and observable um, during your conference. But focus on gathering as much stuff together as you can so that you can kind of get started writing right away. Um, and don't forget, too, that there are resources at the library available um, so that you can kind of frame your paper into in a larger in the context of a larger conversation and if you look either at the start here button or the help and FAQ button on a blackboard I have a link to the library's resources for distance learners which I recommend um, especially if you haven't used the library in a in a little while that you take a look at or if you're more familiar with accessing the library resource on campus and not as a distance learner take a look at those um, they walk you through uh, how to you know figure out which button will get you the article when you find your search results, um, effective search techniques, how to sign, how to sign into um, the off-campus access for the library. Um, so that's a useful resource. Again, it's under help and FAQ or the start here button on our Blackboard site. So things that this paper should do. First, um, you want to introduce your subject of study for your reader, right? Um, the, the hard thing about this paper is that, you know, students usually find a discourse community or, um, you know, some kind of practice or text that they're really excited about and they want to be able to talk a whole lot about. We've talked about how to try to rein that in and focus the paper on one particular aspect of your subject of study. But first, at the beginning of the paper, you want to introduce that subject of study to us and frame your research as much as possible in terms of existing conversations surrounding that subject, right? So, um, if you are looking at, um, you know, street graffiti, or if you are looking at, um, what's another topic? Some of you were talking about, like, ways in which smartphones are changing communication, right? Um, you want to be able to frame your study in terms of what people are already saying about this thing. You don't want to do that in too much detail, but you want to try to give us a brief overview of some other, uh, some other conversations happening, what some other people have had to say about your subject of study. So that's what your introduction is doing. It's introducing the topic and kind of giving us the background. Then you want to be able, then I would like to see in your paper you describe and justify your research methods. Um, and if you take a look in the Unit 3 sandbox at the student samples there, you'll see that those students have included a research methodology section where they do that. Um, and Tony Mirabelli's piece that we read is also a very good sample of this. So the purpose of a methodology section is to tell your readers about what kind of research methods, right, what kind of tools and practices you use to gather the information you're writing about in your paper. And this is really important to do because the ways in which we gather information shape the kind of information we end up with. And we saw this happen when we were looking at um, the interviews by Terry Gross and Stephen Colbert with Maurice Sendak, right? So I had you look at two different interviews of the same person, and I'll bet you came away with a different sense of who Maurice Sendak is as a person and what his work is all about based on those two interviews, right? So the ways in which we conduct research rhetorically shapes the kind of information we have. So it's very important to be transparent about how you've conducted your research so that your reader is able to kind of contextualize what you've done and see why it kind of has shaped the way it is. 
So when you do that, this last bullet point is, is what you're doing. Describe what you observe. Oh, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> this last bullet point is um, then after you've talked about your research methods, then in the body of your, of your paper, which is, you know, the last four to six pages after you've done those first two things of introducing your subject and describing your methods, the last four to six pages are you describing what you've observed and analyzing what it means or reveals, right? Getting into those hows and whys. So really, this paper kind of breaks up into pretty short sections. So again, focus, focus, focus. One small thing that you can tell us about the subject of study. I know you found something you're excited to research. Try to rein it in as much as possible. Um, and, and something to think of, too, is that, you know, I think for a lot of you, um, I, I am assuming that most of you have not conducted very much primary research in college so far. Most college courses ask you to conduct secondary research where you see what other people have gathered, other people have, have found out through first-hand observation, and then you draw that together and report on that. So it may kind of feel foreign to be working with first-hand research, but what I want you to remember is that you're using the data that you gather in the same way you would use secondary research. You're using it to support your arguments and claims and to show us what you've found. So you want to be able to develop a good level of detail so that when you claim that, you know, um, you know, that emails are changing and now kind of look more like text messages, you need to be able to justify that with and convince us with details, with what you're seeing, with what other people are saying about how they use them. So you're using your research to, as evidence to back up what you're saying, just like you do with secondary research. Um, and what can really help, a lot of you are kind of talking about something where it would really help to see the texts that you're talking about or to see visuals of um, some kind of site that you're observing. So do try to include as many artifacts as possible, right? Pictures, you could include video, you can include sound clips of an interview if that's helpful. Um, and to enable this, I really um, encourage you, if you would like, instead of developing a draft of a paper on Microsoft Word, you could go ahead and write the paper on an online platform and then for the workshop just share a link with us so that we can see it. So some ideas for places where you could do this if you're interested in you know being able to throw you know other kinds of artifacts into your paper. Um, there's a website called Storify um, that is free and it's basically a blank canvas that you can drop stuff into so you can embed videos and photos and tweets and all that kind of thing and then be able to write in text boxes kind of anywhere on the page. You could also use a blog platform like WordPress or Blogger. Um, you could use a website platform like Weebly, um, that's W-E-E-B-L-Y. Um, or you could use a wiki site like PBWorks, and that's the letter P and the letter B and then the word works. Um, any of those sites would kind of work. If you're not already familiar with one of those platforms but you are interested in doing something online, I might suggest that something like Storify or Blogger might be the most user-friendly and have the least kind of barriers. Something like WordPress, for instance, is really robust, but there's a little bit more of a learning curve involved than there is when you use something like Blogger. So if you want to do something online, try to make that come to that decision quickly so that you can start poking around and figuring out that platform right away. But I really do encourage you to write something online. Um, and you could also perhaps write something um, directly into Blackboard. We could talk about that if you want to be able to write Blackboard will also let you embed video and, and images and all that sort of thing. It's a little bit more difficult to use, um, but that could also be an option. We could create like a little space on Blackboard somewhere for you. Um, so if you're interested in that, send me an email and I can kind of figure that out with you. So looking ahead and, you know, wrapping up what's left in the course, you have a draft due on Monday, the 3rd of June. Um, shoot for about three to four pages with that draft if you can, um, and it can be whatever portion of the paper makes the most sense for you to write first. So some of you like to write your body first, you know, maybe you've started observing things already. You could go ahead and post an excerpt of like the middle of the paper if you wanted, or if you wanted to get started with the introduction and the method sections, then you could go ahead and post that. Um, whatever excerpt you choose, please kind of just like the writer's note that you gave me with your drafts where you kind of explained, you know, that writing process to me, explain to your peers what part of the paper they're looking at. That way, if you've started in the middle of the paper and everyone says, I'm confused about what your thesis is, you won't get comments like that. You'll get more productive comments if you let us know what part of the paper you're posting. Um, and then I've given you, because these are longer drafts, I've given you two days to return comments to your peers. So that's due by Wednesday the 5th. 
And I will also be offering feedback at that point on the discussion board along with your peers. Now, I won't be looking at a full draft of your paper. Um, I mentioned to many of you in your conferences that if you're interested in getting my feedback, I'm happy to do that on an individual basis. Please do make sure if you're asking me to look at your paper that you try to send it to me um, with enough uh, with enough turnover time that I can kind of have some time to read through it and give you some feedback before it's due on Friday. So I would say Thursday at the latest if you're looking for help with your with your paper. And then all final writing is due Friday, June seventh um, by midnight. The literacy analysis draft um, revisions are due at that point. Um, some of you asked if you need to revise the literacy analysis. That's kind of up to you. I've tried to give you a give you a general idea of where the grade falls, but I haven't assigned it a firm grade. So if you kind of feel comfortable with where it's falling, um, then I guess that's your decision. Uh, the genre analysis, when I return that, it will have both a grade and comments. So you can kind of make your decision as to whether or not you want to revise that piece. And then the final research paper in its full and final form will be due at that time as well. Um, so that's all I have. If you have questions, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And I look forward to seeing your drafts next Monday. Thanks.